All right, we've officially hit 11 a.m. here on the West Coast, so I would like to welcome you all to today's webinar. It's called ELDs in the Limo Industry, Are You Exempt? And it's being presented by LCT and Joe Gwynn and Chris Shabilsky of Limo and Bus Compliance. I'm Lexi Tucker, the Associate Editor here at LCT, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. I encourage you to ask questions during the webinar at any point in the chat box, and we will try to address as many of them as possible after the initial presentation. So without further ado, I'm going to hand things off to Joe and Chris. Thanks, Lexi. Uh, I just want to say you did a fantastic job of not butchering Chris's uh, last name. So oh, yes, congratulations so glad. <laughs> on that. <laughs> so we wanted to talk about ELDs. Uh, we've seen a lot of confusion recently concerning the topic as it concerns the limo industry. Uh, there's a huge push right now for manufacturers who are trying to get as many sales as they can, especially utilizing the upcoming road check where the emphasis is going to be ELDs. Sorry, we're having speaker issues. Turn your monitor down. Technical difficulties. Okay. All right. So we want to talk about, first of all, what is an ELD? An ELD is an electronic logging device that has been talked about for at least 20 years in the transportation industry. And, and this, is, this comes from years and years and years of truck drivers being limited to the number of hours that they can legally drive that's considered safe for the motoring public. Truck drivers forever have found ways to manipulate these hours. And safety advocacy groups have petitioned the government to put a tighter rein on what a driver can do. The solution that's finally been implemented is what we now know as an ELD that plugs into the vehicle and records every time a vehicle moves. This is used to ensure that drivers are not taking liberty with the number of hours that they're actually driving. So the so ELD mandate took effect in December of last year with a kind of a leniency period to allow implementation by carriers. The mandate actually came out over two years ago. So this has not been a surprise to transportation companies. Trucking companies have known for two and a half years now that they were going to have to have these things installed. However, like most people, people procrastinated and didn't do anything about it. Uh, we'll put a link up to that ELD yeah. mandate. If you're interested in reading it, it's about 500 pages of technical specifications, and, and it makes really good uh, vacation reading. So you're you're welcome to read that. I wouldn't personally, except for about the first 50 pages. Nothing else really relevant unless you are a manufacturer of ELDs. In that case, help yourself. So. Let's talk about who needs ELDs, or rather, who doesn't. First of all, I want to say, if all you run is SUVs and sedans, I want to thank you so much for attending this, but it's not relevant to you unless you spend all buying nine or more of your vehicles. So the FMCSA has mandated any vehicle over nine passengers or over 10,001 pounds that travels to the airport or leaves the state is regulated from their regulations. They have authority over what you do, how you do it, and when you do it. So, 
what do you need if you're subject to the FMCSA regulations? It, all of the basic things that you think of with CDL drivers apply, even if you're just operating vans and limos to and from the airport. So hours of service records, driver qualification files, vehicle inspections, maintenance plans, records, 45 or 90 days, depending where you're at. And then if you have CDLs, drug and alcohol policies. The biggest thing from the DOT perspective is if you don't have it recorded and written down, it doesn't count. So all of those policies have to be written out and you have to have the things to go with them. The other thing that affects some operators that we're talking about today, of course, is ELDs. There's two common exemptions to ELDs that apply to limo and bus companies. First one primarily applies to bus companies. If your vehicles are 1999 or older, there's exemptions for that. Those exemptions also take into account things like engine swaps, older engines that didn't have OBD2 and JBUS, um, which are the protocols used for ELDs. Um, but in general, for most limo companies, fleet is younger than that. The other one is called the 100 air mile exemption. Basically, an air mile is a nautical mile in common terms. It's as the crow flies, and it's about 115 miles. And it's a radius from your terminal. So if you have multiple offices, it would be from that driver's start and end office, which can make a huge difference for companies operating in multiple states, that kind of thing. So to qualify for the exemption, there's two criteria you have to meet. Driver has to be off duty within 12 hours of going on duty. Doesn't matter if they had gaps during the day or anything like that. If they came in at 6 a.m., they have to be done at 6 p.m. The other one is they don't exceed 100 air miles from their starting terminal. Now, because it's a radius, you could go 80 miles in one direction and 80 miles in the other direction and still be within the 100 air miles. In order to use this exemption for ELDs, you have to qualify at least 22 times out of every 30 days. The exemption follows the driver. So some of your drivers could be exempt and some could not be. If you have a couple of chauffeurs that do over the road trips primarily for you, every vehicle that that chauffeur touches would need an ELD. So if you restrict them to one bus or maybe one bus and one van, you can just put ELDs in those vehicles. You don't need the ELDs if they drive, let's say, a bus, for example, in a sedan and SUV as well. So you would need it in the bus, but not in the sedans and SUVs. So with creative scheduling and paying attention, you can really limit the cost exposure for the company. Pros and cons. ELDs are good and bad. One is it creates an electronic log. It gives you more flexibility in scheduling. You don't have to worry about that 12 hours. You don't have to worry about which chauffeurs are exceeding 100 air miles. You can just schedule within the legal limits set by DOT. The other one is it automates some of the duty status changes. So for those of you that are familiar with driver logbooks, it moves them from on duty to driving and back to on duty. It's not allowed to move them into off duty or from off duty to on duty, but once they start their day, they can go about their shift and the ELD will handle the status changes for them. Downsides, cost is the biggest one. There's generally a hardware cost and a monthly subscription fee. Sometimes the hardware cost is built into the subscription fee in a lease format, but either way, it's monthly out-of-pocket money for the units. And the bigger one even is the administrative burden. Every time that vehicle moves and exceeds five miles an hour, that trip has to be logged. Doesn't matter if this is a detail crew, the maintenance shop, or you're just taking a van home to help move a couch. That time has to be accounted for and that person has to log it. And then there's also things like training, um, which can pose some challenges. And of course, outages. Um, these are run on cell phone towers. There's a lot of electronic components that go into making it work, both hardware and software. And outages are very common across ELD providers. If you do need to buy ELDs, there's you know, obvious points to consider. The first one is, is it compliant? The sad reality is to register with the FMCSA, you just have to tell them that your program is compliant. There's no test, 
there's no formal certification process. You simply sign a certified agreement stating that you've read the requirements and your program adheres to them. So not all programs are compliant. The vast majority are designed for trucking companies, which have different rules than passenger carriers. And so they may be great for trucking companies, may not work with mixed fleet or passenger carriers. Other one is price. I've seen ELDs everywhere from $15 a month to $75 a month. They do generally the same things. Installation. Some units are plug and play, some require hard wiring into the vehicle. There's upsides and downsides to both. Of course, the plug and play ones can be unplugged by the chauffeurs. Um, the hardwired ones generally have to pay someone to install. And then how easy is it to use? Anybody that's done a technology implementation with a group of chauffeurs knows that there's definitely challenges in getting everyone on board, using the program properly, that kind of thing. Um, it's no different with electronic logs and ELDs. There's a learning curve with it and a decent amount of management and follow-up time to get it implemented. So what we're saying for the limo industry specifically is most of most drivers in the limousine industry, they, they check in at the same place every day and they leave the same location every day and go home. So they're not over the road drivers. If you have over the road motor coaches, there's, there's more probability that you're actually going to need these logging devices. But for a standard limo company, your guys come in, and yes, their shifts are varied. One morning they may come in at 4 a.m. The next day they may not come in till noon. That doesn't matter. They don't have to have a set schedule of eight to five. They just need eight hours off from the time they leave to the time they come back in. And they also can't exceed that 12 hour shift. So typical day for a, for a limousine driver may come in, jump in a sedan for a couple of hours, and then jump in a bus to do some group work in the afternoon, and, and then maybe even jump in a sedan at the end of the day. One thing you have to realize for a limousine company is all of those hours are regulated. They don't get to, Consider the time in a sedan is not working. That all is included in their 12 hours. So as long as they come in at say 6 a.m. and they're done by 6 p.m., they're good. Now let's say you have a you have a special occasion, you have a lot of group work going on in the morning doing airport shuttles, and then in the evening you've got events and dinner runs and such like that. You're allowed to do this eight times in a 30-day period without having to worry about it. So if you've got 10 drivers, you've essentially got 80 days like that that you can utilize amongst your drivers. And so with a little bit of planning and a little bit of paying attention, the average limo company never is going to need to install or pay for ELDs. And unless it's just something that you want to say we have the latest technology, then great. But if you're worried about the burden that this is going to cost your company, let's face it, limousine companies don't operate on the best margins. We understand that. Utilize the exemption. Don't make this harder on yourself or your operation than you have to. In fact, you don't even have to have a log sheet except for those days that exceed that 12 hour where they're going across that 150 air miles. Now, one thing to consider is we have a lot of events where we help our partners in other cities. So when Super Bowl was here in Phoenix, a bunch of companies came from LA. We even had some that came from New Mexico and they came here for the Super Bowl. And they spent the better part of five days. One thing to realize with this exemption is that day of travel, those guys coming from LA to Phoenix, they traveled more than 100 air miles. But every day that they worked in Phoenix, they were able to actually utilize the exact same exemption simply by changing their home terminal. So if whatever their partner's address was, that became their home terminal. And during the entire Super Bowl, 
nobody traveled more than 100 air miles. So you can take advantage of things like this in your operation to allow you to not have to worry about maintaining your exemptions. This is also super beneficial in an audit. Hours of service violations continue to be the number one violation that a company gets written up for. If you sit down with your auditor and you explain we utilize the time clock exemption, they're only going to be scanning for that 12 to 12 hours or that 100 air miles. So if you're located in, in Austin, Texas, your auditor comes in, he's going to look at your trip sheets for a driver and they're going to look for anything that says that possibly going to up to Dallas or going across to, to Louisiana or something like that. They'll single those days out or they'll look for anything that goes more than a 12 hour work day where the driver came in and then their last trip ended outside of 12 hours. Other than that, they're going to ignore it. So you're making your own audit. Simple, and, and that's what everybody wants. When, when an auditor is in your office and he's digging through your files, everybody's, you know, regardless of how prepared you are, everybody's got that concern. And all you want to do is get this guy out of your office as soon as possible where you don't owe him any money. So maintaining these exemptions is going to make that so much easier on you when you do eventually have that audit. So related to the audit, one of the things coming up, of course, is International Road Check 2018. They put together one of these every year, and you'll start getting sales emails probably last week, week before, letting you know that you need to have ELDs for this year, you need to be ready for Road Check, they're going to be checking for it. So what is a Road Check? Essentially, it's a time period of increased inspection for commercial drivers. Law enforcement organizations throughout U.S. and Canada partner up and conduct an enormous amount of inspections. This year, they're focusing on hours of service. So if you are falling under the 100 air mile exemption, you should have something written up for your chauffeurs explaining that. So they know they can contact the office if they have questions about the chauffeur's hours because they want a logbook on it. And you need to make sure your staff and your chauffeurs understand what's going on so that they can at least explain roadside why they don't have a logbook. Other big things, inspect your vehicles before they go out. This is a great time to make sure you don't have any leaks, belts, tires are all in good shape, all your headlights, reflectors are working and in order. Don't send them out and get yourself written up for something we knew was coming. And verify your driver's hours before they go out. If they're not exempt, you know, some chauffeurs definitely work more than others and they run a lot closer to running out of hours on a regular basis. You know which, which folks these are. Make sure to check their hours before you schedule. And if you're sending out buses specifically, even more so than the vans and limos, even though they do fall under this, make sure to give some extra time. Because if they pass through a checkpoint, they could be held there for up to an hour, hour and a half while they conduct an inspection of the vehicle. And you don't want them to be late for your client pickup. Statistically, they're far less likely to stop you with passengers on board, but they absolutely can. It's the chauffeur's job to cooperate with the inspection. The more helpful you are, the faster you get done. Um, One thing to note, when it comes to roadside inspections is a driver is not required to carry any proof of their hours and the exemption in the vehicle so what this means is on the side of the road as long as they can express just like chris said that they are exempt and it's best to do this in writing the officer cannot interrogate the driver to see if they really 100% truly are exempt. They have to come into your office and start looking at time clock records and, and such like this. So make it easier on the driver once they get pulled over, have a card, something with your registration and your insurance cards that just simply states 
we are a local company who operate under the time clock exemption. This will make it a little smoother on the side of the road. You got your brand new Gretsch bus. It's all shiny. They're not looking for much. They're going to look under it, make sure that your brakes are good and you don't have any leaks. And, and then they're going to let the driver go on its way. And that's one, one of the key issues in a roadside inspection is, is having a clean, good looking bus and, and having a driver that looks like they know what they're doing. So in a way, the limousine industry is extremely ahead of the game compared to the truck driver who's driving the 1976 dump truck and he's barely wearing a stitch of clothing because it's hot and he works in the construction zones. So they're going to be looking a whole lot more at that vehicle than they're going to be looking at that brand new bus that rolls across their inspection point. All right, do we have any questions? No questions? Uh, I'm seeing a few here. Um, and he, one from Jason Chernow, uh, he says, passenger carrying is 15 hours a day uh, per 10 hour driving. You said 12 hours before. I'm not really entirely sure what you're asking there, Jason. So if you were keeping a log book, you get 10 hours of driving and 15 hours of on duty. If you're using the 100 air mile rule, you get 12 hours start to finish. It doesn't separate out the driving from the on duty on the log sheet, but it is the driver's responsibility to make sure they're not driving more than 10 hours. Okay, let's see. Okay, so Jason, that answered your question. I'm glad to hear. Um, let's see. Tom Holden asks, if you own buses that attend events that we normally charge 12 hour minimums, that driver needs ELDs, correct? So the question related to that is, how long is this event going for? Very few events are going to last longer than that eight days. So if it's a weekend long event, say a, a Super Bowl, for example, you may have 12 hour minimums Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So on those days, they need a log sheet or an electronic log, but they do not need ELDs unless they're going to hit that ninth day in a 30 day period. And also to note on that is just because you're charging a 12 hour minimum does not necessarily mean the driver's working 12 hours. We all know that it happens. Somebody has to pay that 12 hour minimum. Your driver may only be out eight, 10 hours. And in that case, you don't even need a log sheet for the day because they didn't exceed that 12 hour time clock. Uh, Tom wants me to clarify. He says, so for a 100 air mile driver, they have a 12 hour max. Correct. Is they, they can only exceed that 12 hour clock eight times in a 30 day period. Before they need ELDs. But if they exceed 12 hours at all, they need a log sheet for that day. Okay. And then Mike Alexander follows this up with, so a driver can operate a bus 30 out of 30 days without an ELD as long as they don't leave the 100 mile radius. Or exceed the 12 hours. More than eight times. More than eight times. Um, let's see. And we have one from Chris. He says, if the driver travels more than 100 air miles but will return within 12 hours, will they still be required to carry a logbook? Yes. So anytime they exceed that 100 air miles, if they get pulled over, the, the officer will check. They'll absolutely look and see how far from the address of the home terminal is from where they are. And if they exceed that 100 air miles and they don't have a log sheet, they can actually be shut down right there on the side of the road until they create. 
and, and that's something you don't want to chance. And, and one thing to realize with log sheets and this exemption, you can use a standard log sheet to track this exemption. So there's really no harm in creating log sheets every single day because that still counts just like a time clock record. So it's still going to breeze you through an audit. It's going to make your life just in general easier utilizing the exemption. But your drivers are in practice if they ever cross over that 100 air miles or that 12 hours. You're already prepared. Now, we strongly recommend that all drivers do a log sheet every single day if there's any chance that once, twice, three times a month, they're going to cross over that 12 hours or that 100 air miles. Just because it eliminates you having to retrain every single time there's something going on. Excellent. So we have another question from Matthew. He asks, if a driver who takes some people to an event uh, is off duty for five hours while at the event, do we need to count those hours toward this 15 hour rule? Basically, can the driver be on duty for more than 15 hours if he get, goes off duty while at the event? So yes, it, um, they can be off duty and it does not count towards the 15. But if you're using the exemption, it does count towards the 12. So if you're using the 100 air mile exemption, that off duty time is still part of your 12 hours. So it's start time to end time, regardless of how many gaps there were. Okay. Another, oh, sorry. So if that gap is eight hours, they actually can start a new day. Okay, so another question from Jason. He says, for everyone's benefit, what's the best way to manage drivers that work for multiple carriers, for example, a school bus and a motor coach? So this gets challenging for sure, especially if they're required to have ELDs because they're required to have ELDs in every regulated vehicle they operate, not just the regulated vehicles they operate for you. So most school bus companies aren't going to appreciate you sending an ELD to work with your chauffeur. Um, but that's technically the way to do it, is they would take that device and put it into their school bus. Um, the alternative is that really as a motor carrier, you're worried about your compliance, not the school districts. So they would document that time as on duty or driving on their electronic logs. And then you would maintain documentation that that employer refused to install your ELD. It really wasn't um, considered and answered by FMCSA in a method where these devices communicate across providers, for example, or across motor carriers. And uh, Tom makes a point. He says, here at Rose, we require, we require school bus drivers to log on duty driving even though they are exempt. So just a side note there. Absolutely correct, because it still counts for you. Um, you run into a similar thing with um, folks operating fire trucks is another common one we have. They're exempt as well. but Yeah, not. and Jason actually mentions transit drivers as well. Yeah. And this is the benefit to using a traditional record of duty status or log sheet every single day for every single one of your drivers because this way they can go ahead and log that additional time when they come back to work for you. And, and it's not just driving jobs that you have to worry about. If you have a school teacher who drives for you on the weekends, all of his classroom hours count against his hours available to him. So don't think about it just as in terms of our drivers who have a second driving job any driver who has a second, third, or fourth job must log all of their compensated work. And to add to that, you know, it, it gets even more confusing um, if they're self-employed because they have to determine which time of their day is considered work time and what is. Um, great example is realtors, right? If they're looking at properties to show clients, does that count if they're sitting on their couch? Maybe. But if they're actively showing clients properties, it's hard to not count that time. 
Excellent. We have another question from Tara. Does Limo Anywhere software and use of the driver app cover us as a log? No. Well, repeat the question again. The question is, does Limo Anywhere software and use of the driver app cover us as a log? So it is, it, yeah, Chris is right. It is 100% not a log. But if every single one of your days is less than 12 hours and less than 100 miles, you could use that as a time clock, but not as a log. So the challenge you'll run into with that, though, is the discretion on whether or not they consider that a time clock is up to the individual inspector. Because it doesn't meet the traditional outline of start time, end time, because it has trip time start and trip time end. That's not necessarily when they arrive to the office and prep their vehicle and when they turn their keys back in and left for the day. So it's up to the individual inspector whether or not they'll accept that at all. So you're better off making sure you keep start and end records if you're going to qualify for the exemption. And Josh asks, for example, a chauffeur is on duty for a total of 14 hours, but only driving for nine of those hours, even though they never leave the 100 air mile radius. They would still need to do a log sheet, I understand, but will that count as one of the eight days allowed per month? It does. Okay, we have a little more time for some extra questions, if anyone has some. I'll give you a sec to type if you need it. And in those days where it's a 14-hour day and you're trying to make sure you're staying in the ELD exemption, those are the days you should be paying attention to your drivers and which ones you are using for those days. And, and we all want to reward our, our best drivers and give them the most hours, but you, can, you just need to be a little smart about it and spread it amongst a couple, three, four of your good drivers. Allow them to all have it. Don't just always go with the guy who <laughs> always says yes, always says yes, because then you're going to get yourself in trouble. All right. Um, Chris and Joe, if you could put up your contact information for people who do want to contact you after the uh, webinar in case they have a question maybe they don't really want to ask in a public forum. Um, all right, guys, if there are no more questions, I think we'll go ahead and wrap things up. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Joe or Chris. We hope you enjoyed today's webinar, and we want to thank you for the time and participation. Uh, at the end of the webinar, you'll receive a short survey. If you could please take a few minutes to fill that out so we can continue to improve, it would be much, much appreciated. Um, and I also want to mention that this webinar will be available on demand on the LCT website under the More tab, where you'll find a link to the video portion of our site. And I also want to thank you, Joe and Chris, for a fantastic webinar. It was very informative. Thank you. Well, thanks for having us, Lexi. Thank you. Of course. Hope everybody has a great day. Thank you.